Yesterday, I did a PR unboxing, not like on camera or anything. I just like laid on the floor and opened up a collection of PR packages. Found so many things or I received so many things that I've seen on TikTok that I've been like, hmm, you know, I'm like curious about. So, um, I'm a good, I'm, a, I'm playing with the stuff today. I also have some things that were, are not like TikTok viral or anything, but like I just wanted to play with. So I'm looking at my table. I can confirm everything today was gifted to me in PR. I'm very grateful for that. But just so you know, a little heads up. But as always, it doesn't matter if I get it in PR or not. I'm gonna be honest. So let's start off with like the prep things. So I talked about in my shopper drop the watermelon collection with Lawless. They did send it to me. The only thing I'm trying from the collection in today's video is the Forget the Filler Overnight Lip Plumping Mask. The shade is Juicy Watermelon and I just, I needed to try it. The Lawless lip products have had a chokehold on me recently, so I want to try this. Like, look at that. It smells good. It's not like a super strong watermelony fruity scent, but it's there. But it's not overwhelming if you are... Oh, you know what? It is a little more overwhelming once on the lips, but I like it. I feel like I have a Jolly Rancher in my mouth right now. And it kind of has a cooling sensation on the lips. I kind of like it. Okay, I'm just going to let this set on my skin, my lips, whatever, while I do the rest of my makeup. So they'll be nice, juicy, and plump. But I've tried this formula from Lawless before. It's beautiful. And then for some skin prep. Oh my gosh, this thing is so funny. I've seen so many ads. I don't think I've even seen a video featuring this that was not an ad, but I've been wanting to try it because it looks so silly. This is the L'Oreal Revita Lift Derm Intensives Eye Serum. <laughs> okay, just look at the packaging. I don't know if that was appropriate for YouTube. I didn't say anything. It's all in your mind. So it has these little like roller balls, so these roll inside the plastic. I did play with this yesterday on my eyeballs. And uh, look, oh, it feels so nice. I couldn't help it. The balls are metal, so it has such a lovely cooling sensation. Now the serum itself, it's kind of liquidy. I wish it had a little bit more thickness, but nonetheless, this just feels great. If you have eye bags or anything in the morning, just heavy eyes, eyes that need woken up. Honestly, this product is great. It feels amazing. The serum itself, I feel like it's not as hydrating as it could be. It's just a little too thin for my preferences, but it sure is better than nothing. But that tool, the silly looking tool, feels great on the under eyes. I mean, it's a uh, drugstore skincare item. I really, really like it. It's fun. A model. And then the last prep item that I have is from e.l.f. This is the Woe Glow. And it's a dupe of my beloved Super Goop. What is it called? Glow Screen? Yeah, Super Goop Glow Screen. And I am featuring this because one of my best friends actually asked me if I tried this before and what I thought about it. So we're going to use it today. This is a second impression because I did put it on my face yesterday to tell her what I thought, but I want to see how this stands up to my super goop sunscreen. So this is what it looks like. It has a thicker consistency. I feel like it doesn't soak into the skin as easily as the glow screen, but I've seen a lot of you guys comment that you much prefer the e.l.f. version over the super goop version. So maybe if the super goop version didn't work out for you, this one might. So the difference on the skin is this has a less metallic finish. I would say the glow is definitely more natural and it's definitely more powerful with the super goop. So I don't think they look exactly alike on the skin. I personally feel like the super goop also feels just a little bit more hydrating, but that's why a lot of you guys with oily skin said the super goop just didn't work for you. It was too greasy. This I feel like it still is a little heavy on the skin, but you might like it more if you have oily skin. I've just seen a lot of people say they prefer this over the super goop, so keep that in mind, but I really like this as well. It definitely gets the job done. It's not as glowy as the other one, but it definitely is, 
I don't want to say dupe because it's not exactly the same, but it's definitely, if you don't want to buy that one, buy this one. It has more or less the same effect. So I think it is a really nice alternative to the Super Goop. I mean, e.l.f. just... Elf kills it, okay? They really, really do. I'm not gonna use a new foundation. I'm just gonna use my iconic Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint because I'm testing this to put in a future speed review. So one second. Clone closer to my eyebrows. Okay, so Milk Makeup, I think, just launched new eyebrow stuff. One of which does not look really up my alley, but I'm gonna try it. So this is called the Kush Brow Shadow Stick. So I thought it was for like, eyelids but apparently it's for eyebrows but the shape just looks horrendous for my preferences so you're supposed I know the fluffy brow is in and you're supposed to be able to fill it in like this but I do like precision and to twist it you literally twist here which I thought was odd but I'm wearing the shade well I have the shade herb so I'm gonna brush my brows up and you're gonna use the point to you know get more precise and then the flat side to fill in but i just feel like as this wears down it's not gonna be great but i'm gonna fill in like oh this feels so wrong and feels so messy but you know what it's kind of filling it in it did fill it in it doesn't give that hair like stroke kind of effect it just fills in the color so i just feel like you don't have to have perfect eyebrows for this product Okay, so I'm just gonna do that, then I'm gonna use the pointy side. No, I don't like this. Do you see how inaccurate that is? It's too mushy. No precision. Nope, not for me. Maybe if you are blessed with amazing eyebrows, but if you have to fake them and draw them in and fake an arch like myself, it's not the product for me. No, no, I cannot get any precision with this. It's just gonna have to stay like this. Okay, yeah, and you can see it like melting down on here. And look, the, the hard edge that I had, the pointy edge, already gone. Okay, if you literally just need to fill in the color with absolute no precision or reason behind your movements, you actually might like this. It's interesting, it's unique. It's not for me. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And then this one does look interesting to me. So this is also from Milk and it's the Kush Brow Lamination Gel. And I am a self-acclaimed lamination gel expert at this point. And we're gonna see how this one does. Self-acclaimed or self-proclaimed? It's probably self-proclaimed. Okay, and it's like all the others. Oh, I like this. So one side is more flat for more precision and then the other side is longer, which is gonna give a fluffier look. I need the precision, so I go in with the flat side. The brush alone was a good sign that this is going to be good and make up for my crap talking of the first product. And I'm going to use the longer side now. Like, you see, when you use the longer side, it gives more of a natural look. Then you use the flat side, and it really, like, tells the brow hairs what to do. So how I like to do the laminated look is I brush up on the inside of the eyebrow, and then as we go out, I brush them at a diagonal. I could use a brow trim. That's on me. Like, wow. <laughs> Why is that hair sticking up? Um, it's not really holding and shaping my brows how I like. My brows seem to be if falling, and it doesn't seem to have that much product. I don't think this is strong enough for my brows. Personally, it does have a softer feel. If you like a non-hard feel, like you don't like the feeling of hardness in the eyebrow gels, you might like this. I'm gonna be honest, I like that hardness. Mm, no, this brow gel's taking too much work on my end. I'm gonna use my fingers to try and press it down. It's not intense enough for me. This is for like a very natural brow. Okay, this brow hair needs to be taken care of. Goodbye. Okay, so I'm just using a different brow tool to see if I can place the hair. No, my brows are falling. Unfortunately, the Milk Makeup Brow products, I can just tell you, are not up my alley. Okay, so for eyeshadow, it's not like a viral product, but within 
this niche, this group of lovely subscribers that I have. We are all wanting to know about this Nomad Safari palette. So I'm finally using it today. It's a big deal because um, it is very closely matched in color story to the Natasha Denona Yucca palette that just launched. So let's go ahead and use it. I opened this palette and I was like, oh, this does not match my shirt at all, but whatever. I need to play with it. So we're gonna start off with this shade right here. Morami Game Reserve, which is kind of like a pukey, kind of khaki-ish color. And I'm using What's Up Beauty R103 blush, brush, blush, brush, brush. And I'm using that as the transition shade. Today's look is pretty simple. I just wanted to get a feel for the colors that I like and a typical look that I would do. But as always, at the end of this month, I will have a monthly palette rankings where this guy will be featured after I do a few more looks and a few more play sessions with this because today's the first day that I'm using it. I've swatched it before, but I've never used it. So starting off with that, and then I want to add some depth. So I'm going into Crash of Rhinos, which is like a khaki green, dark brown hybrid shade, R14 from Refer. And I'm just going to use this to deepen it. This is the perfect deepening shade for the Game Reserve shade. They go so well with each other that they blend like butter. But I felt like I needed just a hint more depth. So we're going into Honking Hippos. My gosh, the names here are lovely. This is a dark brown shade. And I'm using just a little bit because this shade is packed with pigment, it has a little bit of fallout, so just be careful of that. Applying that to the outer corner. Isn't that just a good base? Very well blended, I really like the mattes in here. Now for shimmers, we're going into Keystone Termites, which is a greenish gold taupey shade, all in one. I used a brush to apply on the other eye and it applied great with a brush, but a little bit of extra fallout because I used the brush, so I'm just using my fingers to reduce fallout on this eye, but you can use a brush if not possible. To use your fingers, and then, oh my gosh, look at this shade, Nile Crocodiles. So fun, I'm actually gonna go in with my refer number two brush, just to get into the most inner corner of the eye, but also applies beautiful with a finger and a brush. That's kind of the main part of the look of what I would do. I'm just gonna blend a little bit more of the crease color, everything, Worked out great. Now for eyeliner, I'm gonna show you what I did. So this is Rumbling Elephants. I'm a little disappointed in the shade because I wanted to use it for eyeliner, but it really isn't pigmented enough to go over the eyeshadow. So I found out Honking Hippos just has a lot more depth and coverage. So I have to use that shade for my shadow liner. So that Rumbling Elephants, the shade that I originally wanted to use as eyeliner, is great for smoking out a look. It's a very approachable kind of black deepening shade, but with it being more sheer, it is harder, almost impossible really to use as an eyeliner because it's not going to show over the shimmer shades. So that's just something to note that the dark brown shade is more pigmented than the grayish black, but this makes a great quick shadow liner for today's look and i will absolutely continue playing with more of these green shades that i didn't get to today but i just wanted to see my initial thoughts on this with colors that i would reach for i've done a look with this shade too which was really pretty Overall, I really like this palette. This between the Natasha Denona, personally, I just prefer the Natasha Denona formula more. But if you want to support an indie brand, this one ain't bad either. I really enjoy this one. I used to not like Nomad's formula, funny enough, but now I feel like they really improved their formulas. Sometimes their shimmers can be a little wishy-washy. In this palette, I really like the shimmers. They're not as good and sparkly as the Natasha Denona one, but my advice, I'd still pick up the Natasha Denona, but had these launched separately, I would totally recommend this one. It's great, but unfortunate timing that they happened to be so close because I hate to pit them against one another, but that's what I would pick. We will be back with the eyeshadow, but first I need to do concealer and all that stuff, makeup wipe, and I'm going to clean off 
the fallout because I did get some fallout with this. So I do recommend with this palette, do eye makeup before face makeup. That's why I, I put down my foundation because I love the look of an even base, but I don't do concealer because this is a little bit of a messy formula. I'm gonna give that a second to dry. So in PR, Maybelline has sent me the classic Instant Age Rewind Eraser Concealers. I love this range. I carried like five different shades with me in my makeup kit when I was doing bridal makeup. And it's just so interesting watching the TikTok trends of seeing these things that come back because this is back. So I'm gonna use a couple of shades for the nostalgia, but they have this pink shade, it's trending. Right, they also have like a yellow shade as well. These are trending, so old school. But I'm gonna try the pink under eye. Well, I feel like yellow would make more sense with my makeup look today. Hmm, I have a pink powder and a yellow powder. Should I do one of both? Let's just do both. I think though the yellow correction is gonna look best just with the tones of my eyes today. But we're going to play around with a pink under eye and a yellow under eye today. So starting off with 150, which is the yellow neutralizer shade. Okay, these were really hard to unwrap. <laughs> but we'll start off with the pink shade first. Now, the hot topic about these is that they are unsanitary because of the sponge. So what I did in my makeup kit and what you can do too, to literally the, the sponge comes right off in the product put it on the back of your hand, put it on your palette. I'm putting it back because I kind of like it until it gets icky and when it starts to get icky then I will um, pull it off but if it's just for personal use it ooh, delivered a package but for personal use you can keep this one. It takes a little bit for the product to come out. Okay so I'm just gonna do a little bit of this pink shade, which is very, very bright. Mm. I messed up. I pulled the thing off when I shouldn't have, so it's like leaking everywhere. So the sponge on this one, gotta take the L for that. That's my fault. This will forever not have a sponge. <laughs> and I'm gonna blend that in. So this pink shade is very, very brightening on my skin tone. Oh wow, look at that. Okay, let's try the yellow next. See what we prefer. Now I know what each shade is supposed to color correct, but I wanna see them in the flesh next to each other to see what I think. Sponge is so unpredictable. You just don't know where the color is coming out. I hate the sponge. It's fun to apply, but okay, we're gonna blend that out. This one is honestly brightening too. I think it just depends what you need covered as well as what makeup look you're doing, right? So if I was doing like a pinky rosy look, the pink brightener would be amazing. But I would say typically just with classic makeup color correction, peach looks good on the under eyes and peach is closer to yellow. So yellow is better for the typical undertones that you are gonna find on the eyes that you want to cover. And then for the actual cover shade, I'm using one to one to conceal. This is a great formula. That's why I use it in my makeup kit. Just like a good classic formula. Okay. Hmm, should have picked a brighter shade. That's okay, we'll make it work. And then we're just going to Blend it out. And for today's look, I definitely, by the way, prefer the yellow. It just goes with the colors better, but you'll see even more when we get to the powder. But before powder, I did get these from Pixie Beauty. These are the Bronze Beam and Boost, or On The Glow Bronze Tinted Moisture Sticks, and they went very viral for the blush sticks. So they launched a bronzer version. So I'm really excited to see these since the blushes were so viral, which I only used the blushes once. They weren't like my ultimate favorite. This looks like a blush, does it not? That's Warm Glow. Let's check out Rich Glow. I don't know about these shades. I mean, let's test both and see. Oh, that just completely moved my makeup. Hmm. 
Mm, and then second. I'm gonna use a brush to put that back. I need to wipe it off that lift some bronzer color. Okay. I don't think I like this shade. It's not really even showing up on me. Here's the swatch. It's peach, first of all. This is not a bronzer stick. Okay. I guess the deep bronze, let's see the swatch. Deep bronze is the shade for me. This, you have to be quite fair to work that. So I'm gonna use my brush. You saw how when I swiped it on my face, just completely move the whole makeup around. It's not malleable based on what I'm feeling right now. Let's see if the darker shade looks better. Okay, yeah. Because it actually has some contrast with my skin tone, it's not looking like it's pulling the makeup up as much, but it still just doesn't, I don't think I'm into this, unfortunately. I think the blushes are better. This is a 109 brush from BK Beauty, amazing for cream contour and blush. Okay, so eventually we got there. We got the job done. I'm gonna continue to play with this, play with different products underneath of this to see if that makes a difference. All of these will be in a future speed reviews, but um, I'm not feeling this. Maybe nose contour, right? Hmm. Okay, that was kind of amazing for nose contour though, I'm not gonna lie just to get that straight line. Okay, okay. I like it better after that, but uh, I think there's just better products like these out there. And then to set the under eyes, I'm gonna use these new Jones Road Tinted Face Powders. And I tested these yesterday. They are quite powerful with their color. So I'm gonna use a brush as opposed to a sponge to press these in. So I got sent yellow and pink and we're gonna do the direct comparison. I know it's gonna look a little funny and result wise, but that's okay. So let's start off with the yellow. It's just so funny how these powders, colored powders, are trending because the Ben Nye banana powder, who remembers that from years ago? In my opinion, I don't care for like a yellow or pink powder really. What I care for is how blurring it is and I like it if it's just lighter than my skin tone. It doesn't need to have an undertone. So here's what the yellow looks like. When I used a sponge yesterday, it was way too yellow. This is very cohesive with the eye look and the bronze. Let's take a look after I wipe off my brush with the pink side. And these tinted face powders, they're nice. They're not like the most blurring powder that I've ever used, but I do think they did a decent job with the formula. I just put way too much into the cap on accident. It's quite finely milled, so it just came right through the holes here. I got so much product that just flew out. So the sifter didn't sift it very good. But to me, this pink powder, like you see that, but it's just, for my skin tone, it's too pink. And they say it's for light to medium. Very, very pink. It's contrasting with the eye look. If I had a rosier look on right now, it would be a little bit more flattering. But for me, I'm feeling the yellow side on my skin tone. I think that's where success lays. But I wanted to do that side by side. But overall, I'm gonna continue using these tinted face powders according to whatever color, tone of look I'm using. But you can see the finish here. I think the finish of it is quite pretty. It's a little drying, but I live in a more humid climate. So pretty quickly as my natural oils slash sweat start to come through, it definitely kind of flattens down the dryness. That's what I noticed. This is my second time wearing it. Uh, but I will continue because I do want to wear these some more. So that will be updated soon. Let's finish the eye look now. Doing nothing crazy here. We're gonna start off with the original more game reserve shade and this is going along the lower lash line. This is the only shade I'm blending kind of low. And then we're gonna start to add a little bit of depth here. Crash of Rhinos. Taking a smaller brush, running this a little tighter along the lower lash line. Take a pointy brush into Nile Crocodiles. Now it's just going on the inner corner, 
this inner half of the lower lash line. Then make sure everything is well blended. Beautiful. Okay, so let's get to setting the face more now. Shanta Kai was so kind to send me their Cosmos collection. I'm just going to use the face shades. I said in my uh, sharper drop, I, I wasn't going to put the money down to purchase it, but if they sent it to me, I genuinely would not be upset. So let me tell you, when I opened the package from them, which was I was very surprised by because they rarely send me PR, I was like, whoa. Well, this is a shocker, and I was not disappointed. So I'm going to use the real bronze from the collection. Oh, look at this packaging. <gasps> Incredible. I'm just going to use this as a bronzer to set this brush. It's way too fat. Why did I reach for that? I'm starting to feel like I don't like Pixie Beauty as a brand because they send me so much stuff, and I think where they excel is skincare and body care, but their makeup... I like never like it. I do not like that bronzer, but hopefully my opinion changes as I use it more, but I just, I didn't. But you know how I like to use things that I don't like more than the things I do like, because I try and make them work. I'm about to use that bronzer way more to see if I can get it to work, but this bronzer, gorgeous. I mean, anything Shanta Kai comes out with, I always end up loving it. It's just, they're very, very expensive, but they do a good job with what they come out with. So like this set the face beautifully and naturally. And because of the baked gelée formula, it makes it really great for setting a cream product. Now for blush, I got sent these stunning Essence Pure Nude blushes, which I've heard nothing but great things about. I'm trying to pull a peachy-ish color, which I think this is, the peachiest we're gonna get because all of them kind of have a pretty pink undertone which is really great and trendy for the typical makeup looks that I do but for today we're going to use pretty peach I've honestly heard nothing but good things about these blushes so yeah I mean this is just the first swipe on one cheek but it looks really pretty it has a subtle glow this is kind of NARS orgasmy. So there is a golden shift to it. I'm staring at my eyebrows. I hate this eyebrow gel too. It did not do any sort of lamination. Fell right down. Okay, the blush formula, very, very pretty. I cannot wait to dig into more of the shades, but Pretty Peach is gorgeous. And then for highlight, I'm a powder girl through and through. I've tried so many cream products lately, but I always just love the powders. So from Shanta Kai's Cosmos collection, we have the Real Glow Highlighter in Stella. And again, mm, I just know this is going to be gorgeous. So we're just going to give, yep, mm-hmm. Shanta Kai, they do a good job. They always do. Really, really pretty. I'm so thankful that they sent those to me because I am too cheap to buy their products, but it is such a joy getting to use this collection because the packaging, I just want to stare at it. And before I pop on some falsies, because I absolutely will, one of my new favorite brands, LYS Beauty, just launched a new mascara at Sephora, and they did send this to me. So I wanted to try it, send my support over to them. This is the Lash Confidence Mascara. I love their brand so much because they're one of the more affordable brands at Sephora, and I think they come through with the quality. Now, I don't want to talk too much about mascaras because my lashes suck to begin with, but they did launch this. We love LYS. We want to support, so let's try it. I have to say, I do love Curved Wand. I feel like it makes it easier to apply and have lift. I don't judge a mascara too hard on the first use because a lot of times the mascara is really, really wet. And since my lashes are so straight, they drag them down. But after like a few more uses, I'll update you after the formula has dried because it does feel pretty thin right now. Too early to tell for sure. It's not a wower on the first try because there are some mascaras that are wowers. This one isn't, but we'll see as time goes on. You know what mascara has aged like fine wine? The one size mascara. I used to not like it, but now I love it. The formula just builds on itself because it had more time to dry down. So hopefully that happens with this because honestly, it's not doing much. 
Okay, I'm gonna give uh, this some time to dry in between coats as I layer more, and then when I come back, my lashes are gonna be so much bigger because I'm putting big ones on. BRB. I feel like as the setting powder has set in, like the rosy pinky side is giving more of like a warm look, more of like a toasted look to the skin, which is interesting. But let's finish off with lips. I just pulled a random lip liner from my drawer. Um, I'm gonna use the Catrice Plumping Lip Liner in the shade or what a doll. So I'm just gonna line my lips with this. I've used this formula many times before. This is just a new shade that I grabbed. For lips, I received an insane package from YSL of their lip colors, which the Candy Glaze lip gloss stick is viral right now. And I saw Patty Alonzo use it and she gives it her stamp of approval. And her and I have similar makeup tastes. So I tried these yesterday, love them. And then also the lipstick balms, but I pulled the shade Scenic Brown from the Candy Glaze. And I think I'm gonna use that for today's look. And these are pretty much lip gloss sticks that melt to the touch of your body warmth. Lots of brands. M Cosmetics is the one I'm thinking about right now have these. But YSL puts it in a luxe component. And that'll do. It gives a little bit of a plump. I think the lighter shades of this formula are more flattering for me, on me. But that added a nice pigment to the lips. Oh, okay, that's the makeup look. Give me one minute. So a lot of products in today's look were inspired by or got me excited by what I've seen on TikTok. And overall, I think the makeup look turned out fabulous. I would say the standouts of the show. I really love <laughs> this L'Oreal thing because it feels nice. The e.l.f. Woe Glow impressed me. Mm, the new Shantikai Cosmos collection. Super nice. Loved this Essence blush. Loved the Nomad. Loved the YSL. Things that I feel as though I need to test more, but maybe not the best first impressions were the Pixie on the Glow bronzes. The Jones Broad, I, I like the powder itself. I don't love these shades, which is a personal problem, but something to be noted. And then the LYS mascara, it didn't really dry down, and I don't like that. I feel like it's a little bit too wet, but I do need to give this some time. So those are the ones that I'm questioning, but overall I would say pretty successful test trial today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you're curious about these products after I've tested them more, they will be featured on an upcoming speed reviews. I always put every makeup product I try in those videos. So make sure you're subscribed to get updated with that. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.